Uh, no, just first off, I'd like to just say thanks for everybody showing up. Uh, wasn't always like this dating back eight years ago. And to Igo's comment, uh, I think it's the first time we've ever had snow on the ground when we've done baseball media day, so everybody can get a laugh out of that. Also would like to commend our guys that just spoke, our players. Uh, it's kind of a proud father moment for me to just sit back and listen to those guys articulate what their experiences are when you guys ask them questions. And especially Zach, <laughs> I'm sitting back there crying as you guys are asking him about his dad. And Nico was such a staple to Clark LeClaire Stadium and just was – such a, a, a energy source for me. I mean, I'd walk out in the parking lot and you see a smile on his face and um, just that entire family. I mean, if it wasn't for the Agnos family with Jake and Zach and, you know, Lee and Nico entrusting us to take care of their kids, I mean, who knows how many regionals we would have been a part of. So I just appreciate that about Zach and his faith in the Greenville community helping him get through a very tough situation. And I still get emotional about it. I'm actually doing a pretty good job. I'll commend myself right now. I'm not getting choked up. I think I cried enough back there while Zach was talking. But just thank you guys for the support, and uh, we'll let you guys start asking some questions. When you look at that situation, was that was this made the toughest all season you had to deal with? Number one by far, um, as I've told many people. Obviously, we knew Nico was really sick, and it was day-to-day. -day. And uh, when I got that call from Lee about 12.45 on that Friday afternoon, it's one of those moments where I was emotional. I went to the coach's locker room. Zach was lifting weights. And I go, i got to pull this together because Lee and the family have got to tell Zach this, not me. And so I can remember Zach walking in the, the glass doors you guys entered through, which my office is kind of catacornered from that, and said, hey, Zach, your, your mom wants, to, wants you to call her. And he looked at me, and I said, I don't know anything. And, uh, of course, I was lying to him at the time. And, and after the fact, I told him that's the only time I've ever lied to him. But, uh, you know, just – it, there's no textbook. There's no, there's no uh, manual. You don't know what to do. And um, throughout that situation, I just, uh, after he got the phone with his mom, of course, we were hugging and crying in my office. And I said, uh, hey, uh, go get your cell phone and stuff, and, and I'm putting you in my car. And, and I don't say this, like, to get reward for it, but that's all I knew what to do is to drive into northern Virginia. And so we stopped by his uh, house and got some clothes and, I drove to Northern Virginia, and the good Lord bless us with no traffic. Uh, we got there in about four hours and 20 minutes, which probably was the quickest time that you could ever get there. Where he lives, there's normally a lot of traffic. And, of course, I saw Jake and Lee and John and Katie, and, and it was a very family-oriented or, deal at that time. And uh, I would, God gave me strength. I, did, I wasn't very emotional, and I just was there for about two and a half hours, and I didn't say it a whole lot, and I tell people all the time, you know, sometimes you just need to be there for people. You don't need to talk. You don't need to say anything. And, and I got back in my car, and I, I drove back to Greenville, and I got back about 1.30, 2 a.m., and we took the team up there for on that Monday for the celebration of life. And, of course, uh, we were crammed on a bus because uh, now it's harder to get multiple buses because of COVID and people aren't working as much. And so uh, one of our freshmen got COVID, and then a day later I got COVID, and then Colby Bortles got COVID, and – COVID, it, it was hard on me, the after parts of it, and plus the Nico situation. But our guys did a really good job maneuvering through it. Coach, how is, uh, how, how is the fall been? Getting back on the field with the guys after something like that, and, and then, you know, having them back here for practice, you know, getting baseball, you know, getting into – like I said, with everything going on, I thought our guys did a really good job. Our, our coaching staff did a, a tremendous job, Jeff and Austin and, and Blake. And, um, you know, Coach Macias was here. Um, I think I said Coach Knight, uh, Womack, uh, Dennis Wilson, our strength coach, just keeping everything together. Uh, of course, I, I was here once I got out of uh, the protocols of staying uh, inside with COVID. But the – our leaders on the team did a great job too. I mean, that, that's the thing. When you hear our guys speak, 
they 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 get it. You know, the the Matt Bridges and the Cam Colmores and the Tyler Smiths of the world have passed a lot on to those guys, and and they understand how to maneuver through some tough situations. Um, you know, the the winning and losing. I know that fans are going to judge me one day, but. Uh, this fall probably helped me realize, like, at the end of the day, no offense, uh, I don't care how many games I win. I, I got a bigger purpose on this planet than to just win baseball games. How impressed have you been in the last six months, year, two years with the focus of these guys? I mean, 18 years old, 22 years old, doesn't really matter the focus to push through everything, whether that was, you know, issues with you know, family or, you know, COVID. They came out here, and when it comes time to work, yeah, I, I go back to last year, you know, when you're coming off a year where we couldn't play, no fans. And, and to be honest with you, I took it for granted in the moment. It's just, you know, it's taking it day by day and you're just going out there and uh, taking care of business. And opening day, I think we had to back up the game because of, of rain and it was really, really cold. We had to go to extra innings and it's the first time I ever went into the parking lot and I had ice on my windshield at about midnight. And I was like, man, it was. I knew it was cold. I didn't know it was that cold. And for our guys to be able to win the conference, playing four games in a weekend, like I don't think people really get what they had to go through. I know the coaches do um, because about halfway through the conference season, I was going like, man, this this sucks. This is not fun. It's a marathon, and it's taken me two days to recover after a weekend series. And, and for our guys to win the conference, uh, pretty handedly, to be quite honest with you, uh, was really special. And then to host a regional with all the fans and Pirate Nation, uh, I get chill bumps talking about it because it was slammed. They can say there was only 5,000 or 5,500 people here. There was way more than that here. They were hanging over, you know, the, the outfield fence. And uh, we would not probably have won the Charlotte game for sure if we didn't have Pirate Nation behind us. Cliff, I know your thoughts on being ranked highly preseason, but – what would you prefer in a perfect world? Do you like the fact that you guys are recognized early on, or do you like preseason when you're not ranked and people overlook you? Which is more motivating? Well, if you want me to be totally transparent, which I normally am, is I'd rather not be ranked because then they stay hungry. And I said this to Brian Bailey earlier. You look across college athletics and you pick the sport, football, basketball, baseball, there's more upsets, so to speak, than there's ever been. Why is that? Well, it's because of social media. It's because kids from 18 to 22 year old cannot handle reading good stuff about themselves and still having an edge about them. And uh, that's why I am the way I am. Look, you, you can like Nick Saban, you can hate him, but it is rat poison. I mean, you look at Bill Belichick, you look at the most successful coaches in the country, and they talk about it being noise or rat poison, whatever it may be. So if I had to pick, I'd say, yeah, but you know, I can look out there and say that we're talented. I mean, look, we got a really good team on paper, but guess what? Well, that'll get you nothing. Uh, we had a good team in 2017, and, and that's the experience I, I pass along to these guys. Jeff Palumbo, myself, and Womack, we're the only ones that are still here from the, the 17 year. Everybody else has moved on elsewhere. And that was the cool thing about Matt Bridges and Cam Colmore and Tyler Smith last year. They could give them experiences. Hey, guys, like if you don't handle your business, this is what's going to happen. Now, the older guys have heard of me say it so much, they probably can recite what I say. But it, it, it's real, man. It's real. And, and I'm happy now, looking back on it, that we had 17 because it gave me a time to reflect. And I tell people all the time that the best thing that has happened to ECU baseball since I've been here was us losing the conference tournament championship game in 17 because we would not have had 18. We would not have had 19. We would not have had 2021. And you look at the GPAs that we've had, we wouldn't have had those GPAs. We've been four and a half years with a 3.41 team GPA or higher. Man, that's pretty impressive. That's a credit to our guys, our coaching staff, Rebecca Wade, our academic advisor. Coach, you got a great schedule again this year. A lot of, a lot of tough opponents coming in, going places. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Jeff and I, we, we probably put together probably the toughest schedule that we've ever had. So uh, that'll be uh, very challenging for us to be able to maneuver through. And look, if we play the way we are capable of playing, then it'll put us in a good position to be where we want to be in the postseason. But if we don't play well at any given day, it doesn't matter who 
you, you pick on that schedule, we can lose for sure. So it's it's a good opportunity for our guys to go out there and compete at the highest level. Coach, you've got a couple fifth-year COVID seniors on your roster. I was just curious, like pros and cons to, to dealing with like COVID seniors like that? Well, I think each individual is is unique. Uh, you look at the fifth year seniors, and, and I hope I get them all right. Uh, this whole COVID year thing has messed me up in my mind. But Bryson, of course, is a fifth year senior. Cooch Manor is a fifth year senior. Logish and Ben Newton are two junior college guys, but they're fifth year seniors as well. Bryson Whirl and, and Jake Cooch Manor have a chance to be a part of four regional championships, which will be. Uh, pretty cool, or three regional championship, three regional championships, but to be able to host four regionals, and uh, I told him that I just thought about that one day. I was like, man, I was on three really good teams here, and we would have hosted three regionals in a row, but you you got a chance to host four regionals. Malcolm, my fact check checks right there. Okay, just making sure you were nodding because I know you know. Uh, but that that's pretty cool. But it is it's a fine line. Um, you know, when those guys come back as fifth years, I was a fifth year senior. Much different situation than those guys. I wasn't very good when early in my career, and I had to become good. So I was hungry um, to keep those guys motivated. The thing I would say about Bryson, he was one guy I was kind of worried about, but he has been really intentional in what he's done and has been a good positive influence on guys that have come into our program, especially the outfielders. And he's not a guy that likes to talk a lot, but he has shared a lot of – really good experiences that he's had, good and bad, uh, with those guys, and it, it's helped our program. You mentioned the four games in three days being tough. Did you enjoy only having to scout one team a week as opposed to now you got to go back to the scout for that Tuesday midweek game? Hell no. I'll take that Tuesday midweek all the time because the, the, that doubleheader day, and and I, I do take it pretty much personally one game at a time, and, and I look at the opposing pitchers. But if we were playing at home, I'd be up here at like 4.30 in the morning watching video, and then you're getting home at 11 o'clock at night, and then you're having to play on Saturday. I don't, I don't wish that on anybody. So I'll take that Tuesday. I'll take Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, over the four games in three days. We asked, we asked the players about how playing in the regional, playing in the super regional last year helped them as they get ready for this year. How does it help you guys as coaches? Um, you know, every every regional, every super regional is different. Uh, I know that you can look at my super regional uh, head coaching record and say I suck as a coach. So uh, I, I know what the record is, as I told our team, and Malcolm can give you the accuracy. But uh, I was a part of the first regional or the first super regional team at East Carolina here when I was a player, and we went 0-2, and uh, I made the last out in the super regional on a – 1-0 count. I was a tying run at the plate. I had 15 home runs on the year. I, I remember that moment very vividly. Um, and I went for it. I was sitting on a changeup, got it, and I skied it to second base. I was a left-handed hitter. I just missed it. And uh, every super regional we've been a part of has been different. Uh, our guys were tired in 19, and, you know, we didn't play well enough in the regional to not to be tired. So that was our own fault. And Louisville was very good. Last year we went toe to toe with arguably the second best team in the country with two of the best arms. The past two super regionals we've faced four first round arms. So, as I've told our guys before, you got to go to Omaha through the front door. And coach, I got it from Coach Bianco at Ole Miss. You can't go in the back door. Everybody's got to know that you're coming. And look, I, I don't know when it's going to be. This is the million dollar question. Only the good Lord up top knows when it's going to happen. But I know we're doing things the right way. And if we continue to do that, then we're definitely not just going to go to the World Series. We're going to win a national championship as well. Coach, every year we ask you about who's going to replace the, the main guys who left or whatever. So, of course, we got to do it again. Uh, Norby, Francisco, obviously, could have a lot of home runs there. Just who do you maybe kind of see replacing that power? Do you see your team maybe scoring runs in different ways? First off, I say it all the time, is you, you don't replace Francisco. You don't replace Norby. You don't replace Gavin Williams. And you don't replace Colmore and Bridgie and Smitty. The, the collective unit needs to, you know, pick it up. And uh, we've got – a bunch of guys, in my opinion, that can be very good offensively. Uh, we can run out a team that is very, like, as, as good as defensive team we've ever had here, or we can go really offensive. Um, makes our jobs as coaches a little bit harder. Um, we're as deep on the mound, if not deeper, and we're as talented on the mound, if not more talented than we've ever been here. Some of it is some youth, but at the end of the day, you know, we had a team meeting yesterday. Would you rather have experience? 
or would you have, rather have very talented young arms down there that are better as a group than we've ever had? I don't know. You flip a coin. So at the end of the day, we just need those guys to be the best version of themselves. And if they're that, then we'll be fine. But, you know, do I think we're going to hit as many home runs as we hit last year? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think we've got a chance to have more guys that have five to eight, five to ten home runs, one through nine, than we've ever had before. I think we're faster as a team um, this year um, as a unit. So uh, we can be more versatile at stealing bases and, and uh, of course, executing our bunt game. It was like, a, I guess, a little less than a month ago. What kind of maybe indicators do you kind of look for now at this point in the year and, how, and getting ready for the first for me, it's just their mentality. You know, I've been on some of the younger guys that maybe have been reading a lot of y'all stuff y'all put out there, and they're excited, and oh my God, you know, the season's 30 days away, and then they act a little bit different at practice, and then I have to, you know, pull out the mean Coach Godwin and say, hey, get locked back in because we need you to be good at practice today. I think that's the biggest thing for me is just the mentality of our guys. And, and I know people think I'm crazy, but the reason we have success is because we coach our guys' minds the most. And if you, they're not right in their mind or in their heart, then they're not going to be the best version of themselves when it comes to being a talented baseball player. How much of that is in the type of player, I guess, type of person you recruit? Um, as much as it is, you know, developing that because I'm sure as a coach and as a recruiter, you see the killer mindset that's able to lock in as much as you see a, a 90 mile an hour fastball. Um, is that kind of one of the things that you really look for when you're recruiting? Well, we try to, but it, it's tough. You know, uh, <laughs> during COVID, we were watching videos, so it's tough to it's tough to figure that out. Um, did we know that Alec Burleson was a competitor? Yeah, we did. Uh, Connor Norby wasn't Connor Norby until his junior year, and he had to grow up a whole lot. Carson Wisenhunt, I'm watching him speak a minute ago, and I'm like, oh, my God, like three years later, this guy has grown up a whole lot. It's just really cool to see, and the credit goes to our coaching staff and the way we just continue to cultivate our culture here. And they grow up, and the older guys just pass along their experiences and go, hey, look, like this stuff works if you'll just buy into it. So – we try to recruit that, but it's not its not that we can. I mean, um, a funny story about Connor Norby, and, and we've talked about this a lot, but he came to camp, and on Sunday was day two of camp, and, and the first base dugout, our hitting indoor used to be behind the first base dugout before the new Walter Williams and Marie Williams hitting indoor was built. And I was like, Norbs, how you doing this morning? He said, I'm tired. And I was like, oh, my God. And I walked over to Coach Palumbo, I go, we're, we're not recruiting this guy because I can't coach somebody that's tired and he's playing in front of us. The next weekend, he's playing over at Pitt Community College, and Jeff said, hey, uh, Norby's playing over at Pitt Community College. And he goes, I think you need to go see him. I said, I'm going to go watch one at bat. I'm going to watch one at bat, and then I'm going home. And so his first at bat, he hit a home run, and I said, well, I guess we'll try to work this out. <laughs> Uh, speaking of second base, who's kind of competing there to get a shot? There? You want me to go ahead and go around the starting lineup? Go go around while you're talking about it. So, uh, if we play tomorrow, and just to get it out there, if we play tomorrow, uh, I think we're deeper at catcher than we've ever been. But if we played tomorrow, Ben Newton would start behind the plate, and this is we hadn't even scrimmage yet. So, but Ben would start. Uh, a Mac would start at third. Ryder would start it short. Uh, Zach would play second. And part of that reason is Jacob Starling still trying to get through a leg injury that he had in uh, the summer. Uh, Joey Barini is a lot better um, on the infield, and he can bounce around shortstop, second base. Zach, of course, can play all three. Uh, first base would be Josh Mullen. Um, Josh has done a really good job of shaping up his body and becoming a better defender. Uh, also, C.J. Boyd can play first base. He's kind of a utility guy. Cam Clonch is a guy that can play first base or in the outfield. And then the outfield is, is crowded. Uh, Riley Johnson played really well in the fall. Um, Bryson played well. Bryson's going to be somewhere out there. Lane Hoover is going to be somewhere out there. And then you got Carter Cunningham, who has really upped his game defensively, swung the bat really well. So on any given day, you could see any of those guys um, out there. Ryan McChrystal 
who is a catcher, along with Aiden Edwards and Justin Wilcox, and I, I could see all those guys playing in some capacity as well. McChrystal has uh, shown us at times he can be an elite bat, so he can be in the DH role as well. You mentioned Starlin. Anybody else dealing with injuries or health issues right now? Nothing, nothing, um, nothing other than a sore arm here or there, but nothing else, yep. You want another rotation too? You're waiting for that? Um, so there's five guys that coming out of the fall that did a really good job. You know, Wiz and Hunt did not pitch, but obviously Wiz and Hunt's in that mix. Uh, Cooch is in that mix. Logish and Sailor, they were the two guys coming out of the fall for me that really made me feel more comfortable about our rotation. And then Josh Groves showed flashes. So opening weekend, we can only start three guys. And in our program, we talk about having Friday night guys in the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday role. So whenever your name's called to start, yeah, be that Friday night guy. But Two of those guys are probably in the bullpen open a weekend, so we'll just kind of see how all that stuff shakes out. Mayhew, of course, is going to be in the back end of the bullpen in some capacity, and Skylar Brooks has really come along. And the freshmen, and I'm not going to sit here and name all the freshmen, but the freshmen have done a really good job of continuing to develop on the mound. Coach Knight's done a great job with those guys, and like I said, they're talented. They just need to take it one pitch at a time and not try to do too much.